What if I told you ancient Egyptians grew more food per acre in the desert than most modern farms produce with unlimited water and fertilizer? While today's gardeners struggle to keep plants alive through a single dry week, Egyptian farmers fed millions for 3,000 years in one of the harshest climates on Earth. They used seven techniques so brilliant that modern agricultural science is only now beginning to understand why they worked. And here's the part that should make every gardener pay attention. These methods require almost no inputs, no products, and no constant maintenance. Stick around because technique number five literally reverses soil degradation, and number seven has been proven by modern research to triple plant survival rates in drought conditions. Welcome back to GrowWise Vision, where we reveal ancient gardening secrets that modern farming forgot. If you're tired of fighting nature instead of working with it, you found the right place. Today, we're traveling back over 3,000 years to understand how Egyptian civilization built gardens that thrived where nothing should grow. These aren't just historical curiosities. These are practical, scientifically validated methods you can use in your garden starting this week. Before we dig into these seven techniques, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. We drop videos like this every week, revealing ancient wisdom that modern gardening desperately needs. And if you're already seeing the value in learning from civilizations that actually succeeded for millennia, tap that like button. It genuinely helps more gardeners discover this information. Now, let's talk about why Egyptian gardens matter to you right now in your backyard. The Nile Valley where Egyptian civilization flourished receives about two inches of rain per year. That's less precipitation than Death Valley. Yet Egyptians grew wheat, barley, onions, garlic, leeks, lettuce, cucumbers, melons, grapes, figs, dates, and dozens of other crops continuously for over 3,000 years. Modern intensive agriculture depletes soil in decades. Egyptian fields produced for millennia. The difference wasn't technology, it was understanding. Egyptians observed, adapted, and refined techniques that worked with natural systems instead of against them. Modern science is now validating what they knew through observation and experience. So let's break down exactly what they did and why it still works today. Technique number one, basin irrigation. This is the foundation everything else builds on. Egyptians didn't fight the desert. They used its annual flood cycle. Every year between June and September, the Nile would flood from Ethiopian highland rains. Instead of trying to control this flood with modern engineering, Egyptians built a simple system of earth banks creating basins across the floodplain. When the flood came, water filled these basins and sat for about six weeks. During those six weeks, three things happened simultaneously. First, the water deposited incredibly rich silt carried down from volcanic highlands. This wasn't just dirt. It was mineral-loaded sediment containing everything plants need. Second, the standing water allowed sediment to settle evenly across the entire field instead of washing through. Third, the water soaked deep into the soil profile, recharging groundwater that plants would access for months. Then, and this is crucial, Egyptians drained the basins. They didn't leave fields waterlogged. They let water soak in, then released excess back to the river. This meant fields were perfectly moist, but not saturated when planting began. Modern agriculture floods fields continuously or relies on constant irrigation. Both approaches waste water and create problems. Egyptian basin method delivered water and fertility once per year. That's it, one major watering that sustained crops for an entire growing season. You can adapt this principle even without a flooding river. The lesson is deep, infrequent watering that recharges soil completely rather than shallow, frequent watering that never penetrates. Build berms around garden beds. Fill basins completely. Let water soak for days. Drain excess. Your plants develop deep roots accessing moisture. Modern, shallow-watered gardens never reach. Technique number two. Shaduf irrigation for supplemental water. For gardens above the flood zone or for dry season crops, Egyptians invented the shaduf around 2000 BCE. This is a simple counterweighted lever with a bucket on one end and a weight on the other. One person could lift hundreds of gallons per day from canal or well to garden with minimal effort. 
The brilliance isn't just the tool, it's the strategy. Egyptians understood that supplemental water should be targeted and minimal. They didn't flood entire fields daily. They watered specific high-value crops like vegetables and fruit trees with precision. The Shah Duf allowed this precision without exhausting the farmer. Modern drip irrigation copies this principle using technology. But the Egyptian approach teaches something deeper. Prioritize your watering. Not everything needs the same amount. Desert-adapted crops and deep-rooted perennials established during the flood season needed almost nothing. Shallow-rooted annuals and young trees received targeted supplemental water. This differentiation saved labor and water while maximizing production. In your garden, this means identifying what truly needs regular water versus what can thrive on deep, infrequent soaking. Most perennial vegetables, once established, need far less than gardeners provide. Egyptian gardens proved this 3,000 years ago. Technique number three, organic matter layering and the gift of the Nile. Every flood deposited fresh silt, but Egyptians enhanced this natural fertilization deliberately. After harvest, they incorporated crop residues, animal manure, and household organic waste directly into fields before the next flood. When floodwaters arrived, this organic matter didn't wash away. It was already integrated into the soil profile. The flood then added another layer of silt on top, essentially creating a natural sheet mulch system. Over centuries, this built extraordinary soil depth. Archaeological excavations show ancient Egyptian agricultural soils ranging from three to six feet deep of pure, biologically active topsoil. Modern agricultural soil averages six to eight inches before hitting subsoil, or clay. The difference is time plus method. Egyptians built soil. Modern agriculture mines it. The technique is simple. After every harvest, add organic matter to soil surface. Don't remove plant material. Incorporate it. Then add whatever natural fertility sources you have access to. Compost, manure, leaves, crop residues. Let this sit and begin decomposing. Then, instead of a flood, add a thick mulch layer. This mimics the silt deposition. Over years, you're building soil depth and fertility simultaneously. Egyptian fields became more productive over time. Modern fields degrade. The only difference is whether you're depositing or extracting. Technique number four, polyculture and intercropping. Egyptians never grew monocultures. Archaeological evidence from ancient gardens shows mixed plantings consistently. Onions between lettuce, cucumbers climbing through grain stalks, melons sprawling under fig trees. This wasn't random. It was strategic. Different root depths meant crops weren't competing for the same soil layer. Different growth rates meant harvests were staggered. Different plant families meant pest and disease pressure was distributed instead of concentrated. Modern science calls this intercropping and has validated its benefits extensively. Plants in polyculture systems show improved pest resistance, better soil health, and often higher total yields per acre than monocultures. Egyptians knew this through observation. They saw what worked and repeated it. In your garden, this means abandoning the one crop per bed mentality. Plant quick maturing greens between slow growing brassicas. Let vining crops climb through supporting plants. Tuck shallow rooted herbs between deep rooted perennials. Egyptian gardens were dense, diverse, and continuously productive. Modern row crop gardens have bare soil between plants, wasting space and creating weed pressure. Dense Egyptian style planting shades soil, retains moisture, and maximizes every square foot. Technique number five. Salinization reversal through fallow flooding. Here's where Egyptian technique becomes genuinely revolutionary. In desert agriculture, salt accumulation in soil is the ultimate death sentence. Salts from irrigation water concentrate in the root zone as water evaporates. Eventually, soil becomes toxic and crops fail. This has destroyed civilizations. Mesopotamian agriculture collapsed partly due to salinization. Modern California agriculture battles it constantly. Egyptians solved this problem 3,000 years ago with elegant simplicity. During the flood season, they deliberately flooded fields and let water sit, then drained it. 
This annual deep flush leached accumulated salts below the root zone before they could concentrate to toxic levels. Modern research has confirmed this works. Deep, infrequent flooding with good drainage prevents salt buildup that shallow, frequent irrigation causes. For your garden, especially in arid climates or if you're using well water with mineral content, this principle is critical. Once or twice per year, flood your beds completely. Let water sit for several days. Then ensure it drains thoroughly. This leaches salts and minerals that have accumulated, preventing long-term soil degradation. Egyptian agriculture lasted 3,000 years in the desert because they understood this principle. Modern desert agriculture often fails within decades because we forgot it. Technique number six, perennial tree crops as the backbone. Egyptian gardens centered around perennial trees. Dates, figs, pomegranates, sycamore figs, and grapes weren't supplemental crops. They were the foundation. These long-lived plants provided shade for understory annual crops, stabilized soil with deep root systems, required minimal maintenance once established, and produced for decades or centuries from a single planting. Modern agriculture treats perennials as specialty crops and focuses on annuals that require replanting every season. Egyptians did the opposite. The majority of their caloric and nutritional intake came from perennials. Annuals filled gaps and provided variety. This is a complete inversion of modern thinking, and it's far more efficient. A date palm, once established, produces for over a century with minimal inputs. Annual grains must be replanted, watered, fertilized, and protected every single season. The return on labor and resources favors perennials dramatically. In your garden, this means prioritizing establishment of fruit trees, perennial vegetables like asparagus and artichokes, and perennial herbs. These become the structure everything else works around. Egyptian gardens were designed to last generations because they were built on plants that lasted generations. Annual gardens die every winter and start from zero every spring. Perennial gardens improve year after year. Technique number seven, microclimates and wind protection. The Egyptian desert is harsh. Summer temperatures exceed 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Winter nights can freeze. Constant wind desiccates plants and soil. Egyptians created gardens as protected microclimates. Walls built from mud brick or stone surrounded gardens completely. These walls blocked wind, moderated temperature extremes, and created shade patterns that protected sensitive crops. Inside these walls, trees were planted strategically to create additional shade and wind breaks. The result was a garden environment dramatically different from the surrounding desert. Modern research on microclimates confirms everything Egyptians practiced. Windbreaks reduce plant water needs by up to 50%. Thermal mass from walls moderates temperature swings by 10 to 15 degrees. Shade from trees reduces evaporation and protects heat-sensitive crops. Egyptians understood this instinctively. They observed that plants thrived in protected locations and struggled in exposed ones. So they built protection. In your garden, especially if you face challenging conditions like strong winds, temperature extremes, or intense sun, creating microclimates is transformative. This doesn't require elaborate construction. Hedges, strategically placed trees, simple fences, or even temporary shade structures create protected spaces where plants thrive. Egyptian walled gardens weren't about aesthetics. They were functional climate control that made desert agriculture possible. Now, let's synthesize what these seven techniques teach us. Egyptian agriculture succeeded for three millennia because it worked with natural systems instead of fighting them. They used annual floods instead of resisting them. They built soil instead of depleting it. They planted perennials for long-term stability instead of relying solely on annuals. They created protected environments instead of expecting plants to survive harsh exposure. And critically, they observed what worked and refined it over generations. Modern agriculture often does the opposite. We fight floods with dams. We mine soil fertility and replace it with synthetic inputs. We favor annuals because they're easier to mechanize. We plant in exposed fields and compensate with massive water and chemical inputs. The Egyptian approach requires more initial thought and design, but once established, 
it requires far less ongoing labor and inputs. This is the fundamental lesson. Front load the intelligence. Design systems that work with nature. Then step back and let them function. Egyptian farmers weren't working harder than modern farmers. They were working smarter. Here's what this means for your garden practically. First, shift from shallow frequent watering to deep infrequent soaking. Second, prioritize organic matter addition every season. Third, embrace polyculture instead of monoculture. Fourth, flush your soil annually if you're in an arid climate. Fifth, make perennials your foundation, not your afterthought. Sixth, create protected microclimates for sensitive crops. These six changes, adapted from Egyptian practice, will transform your garden's resilience and productivity. You won't need constant inputs. You won't fight nature. You'll work with systems that have been proven over thousands of years. If you found value in these seven Egyptian techniques, subscribe to Grow Wise Vision for more ancient wisdom that modern gardening forgot. We reveal secrets from civilizations that actually succeeded for millennia, not trends that fail after a few seasons. Drop a comment below telling me which Egyptian technique surprised you most, or if you're already using any of these methods. I read every comment and I'm genuinely curious what resonates with you. And if this perspective on desert gardening shifted how you think about water and soil, share this video with someone who's struggling with dry conditions or poor soil. These techniques aren't just history, they're solutions. Thank you for watching. Now go build a garden that lasts not just a season but a lifetime.